habits, patterns, and rituals. These three words are getting thrown around a lot these days. So I wanted to take some time today and break down the differences between the three of them. Welcome back to my channel. I'm Heather Evans, a self-care and empowerment coach working with people around the world. For the best advice on how you can live your most empowered life, remember to subscribe to my channel and click on that bell to get notified when I release new videos every week. In the self-help world, there's a bit of a bonanza happening around habits, patterns, and rituals. And I feel like these terms get tossed around quite a bit and we don't actually always know what it is we're talking about. And that's what I wanted to discuss today. I wanted to offer some clarification about what it means when we're talking about habits, patterns, and rituals, and how you can begin to transform these things into manifesting positive change in your life. First up, habits. Habits are what I like to think about as the physical manifestation of underlying emotional, mental, and physical states. So if we think about a habit, and I'm going to use myself as an example, I am your classic nail biter, at least I used to be. Uh, anytime I would go into a new situation, I would immediately start biting my nails. It was my way of coping with discomfort. I am by nature an introvert and being in new situations, networking, making small talk, being in a new community would create feelings of discomfort. I would get really nervous about meeting new people, starting up conversations, and so I would immediately go into biting my nails. In fact, I remember being in the ninth grade and having one of my teachers call me out on it. We had just moved to a new town overseas, and I was so nervous about being the new kid again that I was sitting in class and I was just going at my nails. That was the habit. Now, to be clear, not all habits are quote unquote bad or negative. And the way that I like to think about this is getting away from bad or negative connotations and asking myself, does this habit serve me? Does biting my nails actually make me feel better? Well, in the short term, the answer was yes. It would relieve some of the anxiety because it would give me something else to focus on. The truth is, as time went on, that habit stopped serving me because I became really aware that I was doing it, and it made me more anxious that people were looking at me wondering what the heck this woman was doing biting her nails, especially as I got older. So again, the habit is a physical manifestation of an underlying mental, emotional, or physical state that's creating a particular vibration or sensation in the body. So let's move on to patterns. Patterns are the genesis of that underlying mental, emotional, physical state. So patterns tend to be established at critical times in our lives. They are sparked by something, triggered by something, ignited by something that happens or something that we experience. My first memory of nail biting was when I was in the third grade. Again, we had just moved. And for those who are new to my channel, I grew up in a US military family. I moved every year or two years. And in third grade, I had just moved to a new community. And I remember starting to pick up my nails. And, you know, being in the third grade, being the age I was, I didn't necessarily have healthier strategies for coping with the anxiety I was feeling. So I started picking up my nails and that was sort of the genesis. That's the earliest memory I have. I may have been doing it before then, but that's the first memory I have of biting my nails. So the underlying emotional state was anxiety. And that emotional state was created and manifested because of a pattern of being in new situations a lot, always being the new kid. We had this pattern of moving every year or two years. And so the pattern was, I was new, I had to make new friends, I was feeling really anxious, and that's what developed. So that carried on. Now, I don't have to move to a new community to have those feelings of anxiety or nervousness come up. I might go to a networking event. I might go to a party where I know only a few people. I might even be sitting down to meet with somebody for the first time, and I might have that 
that sensation arise again as a result of a pattern that was established. So if you're looking at habits that you want to change, a habit that's not serving you, one thing you could do is actually take some time to think about, okay, when did that habit first emerge? What's your earliest memory of it? It might not be the first time it happened, but what's your earliest memory of it? And then begin to tune in. When does it pop up again? When does the habit reemerge? When does the habit resurface? And you might begin to see a pattern develop that's tied to an underlying emotional, mental, or physical state of being. This brings us to rituals. And rituals, I feel, are the spaces where we can begin to transform the habits and patterns that are no longer serving us into ones that do. We're going to stick with the nail biting example for a moment. If I am going into a new social situation, I now have a ritual of tending to my nails before I go into that situation. I'm gonna file them, I'm gonna cut them down. I don't paint my nails, they they stay natural. But I make sure that they look nice and they don't have any, what one coach uh, who I was talking about this habit to said, you know, I don't have any of the, the ragged edges that I can begin to pick at. I set myself up with a ritual before going into what traditionally might be a heightened state of anxiety or nervousness. I set myself up by creating a ritual around caring for myself. I actually have a ritual of self-care that's in response to a pattern and habit that was developed over time. You might have a ritual pertaining to something else, and I want to walk you through another example. I was recently having a conversation with someone, and we were working on the fact that they, and this is their words, not mine, they're addicted to online spending. They have a habit of anytime they get an email for a sale, and they get a lot of emails about sales, they automatically go on and start adding things to the cart, and then they press buy. They know that this isn't a healthy habit. Their finances can't support it. When this individual clicks to purchase, they are overcome first with that adrenaline rush of, yes, I just did something awesome, quickly followed though in the next few seconds by an overwhelming sense of guilt and shame. So this is a habit. And what we started to uncover is that when this individual wants to go online shopping, it tends to be triggered by stress in their lives. She noted that I will open up the sale emails on the days where I've experienced high levels of stress, either high levels of stress at work or high levels of stress with my family. And so we began to identify what triggers or what she identifies as stress at work and what she identifies as stress with her family. Then we created a ritual. So we didn't want to change the habit right away. That would have been too overwhelming for her system. So what we did is we created a ritual whereby she would select the things that she was thinking about purchasing, that she wanted to purchase, and then she would take a screenshot of it. So she was still getting the feedback of, I'm clicking a button. It's not to purchase though. It's to screenshot it. And then the ritual is she would screenshot as much as she wanted any day she was feeling particularly stressed. And then part of the ritual is that every Sunday she could review the purchases she had screenshot. And if she really felt like she wanted them and she felt like they were things that she needed and would create positive change in her life, then she could purchase them. So it was a two-part ritual. One, we're creating the immediate feedback by, I'm going to take the screenshot, I'm going to click it, so my body gets that response that I'm doing something, I'm taking action. But then the second part of the ritual happened on Sunday. She could review everything that she saved, and then she could decide if she wanted to move forward with the purchase. This system worked. It worked for her and it reduced her online spending habit. And now her finances are in better shape. She's not overcome with these feelings of guilt and shame about making purchases that are just a response to stress. And she's take and she actually enjoys her time on Sundays. She takes a little time for herself and she kind of reviews things and assesses, okay, is this something that I really want? Is it something that I need? Is it something that's going to create positive change in my life? And it's completely shifted that pattern and habit. The other thing that we had to do is we had to find other ways for her to 
manage her stress. And we did that. And we, we did that in respect to the work that she does and in respect to the family dynamic that she's operating in. So this system can be applied to any habit or pattern you feel you want to change in your life. And again, that first step is assessing, is this habit serving me or isn't it? I hope this has helped you know the difference between habits, patterns, and rituals. And I would love to know from you, is there a habit you want to shift in your life? Leave it in the comments below. This month in the Inner Fire membership program, we are actually doing a deep dive into habits, patterns, and rituals, and we're applying the trace self-coaching model to help members in the program work through habits and patterns that aren't serving them. If you are interested in learning more, be sure to click on the link in the description below. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, remember to like it, subscribe to my channel, and click on that bell to get notified when I release new videos each week. Stay ignited out there. Think about those habits you want to transform out there, and I'll see you soon. Bye. Just